What age were you when you started running? Because chances are it was over 18. And there's something so much harder about doing that. So many more obstacles to encounter and worries to face. But don't worry, because we've got your back. In this video, I'm going to tell you the main issues that adults face when they start running. And I'm going to give you the solutions. And then I'm going to pack your lunch and I'm going to send you off. Actually, I won't do that last bit. I'm going to try and be as clear and as helpful as I can. And if I do help, then consider subscribing so I can help you some more. And one of the first problems adults will encounter is not having a basic understanding of how the body works when training and therefore how to craft our sessions to improve ourselves. I'm going to try and sum up the very basics of running training as visually as I possibly can. And it's going to be a crude explanation of a very nuanced topic, but it should give you some understanding. I like to look at being able to improve my running in three ways. And the first is building my aerobic base, which is to say working on my aerobic system. An aerobic just means with oxygen. And it's basically how good your body is at taking in oxygen and getting it to the working muscles to fuel your exercise. When you run easy, i.e. building your aerobic base, you're training your body to get better at it. So it changes loads of things like capillary density or amount of mitochondria in the muscle cells. And while you don't need to know what that actually means, just know that it means your body is better at using the oxygen in the energy process and you get faster for the same effort. The second way of training is lactate threshold work. And very roughly, this is about the pace that you could run for about an hour at. And if you've ever experienced running too fast and having to slow down because your legs are burning and you feel like you're gonna blow up, that's because you're building up too much lactate for the body to get rid of. And the body knows it, so it slows you down until it can get rid of it. By training in sessions just underneath that threshold, like kilometer repeats at around a half marathon pace, or eight or nine out of 10, you're teaching your body to push the threshold up from below so it gets better at getting rid of blood lactate and then you can run for longer at that pace then throw in even harder intervals like 400 meter repeats 200s or two minutes hard and then you're working on your vo2 max which is the maximum amount of oxygen that the body can take in during exercise and crucially this is the point and use and when you work at that level you both increase your vo2 max and you pull up the lactate threshold from above. So in short, you need to build your aerobic base, push your lactate threshold, and then also pull it up from above and push your VO2 max as well. And if you want more detailed information on any of these concepts, then there are videos on all of it on the channel. The biggest problem for adults in general is we tend to find ourselves trying to pick our way through a lifetime of poor habits, whether that be diet choices, sleep patterns, exercise routines, self-care, it can cause issues when we want to form new and strong positive habits. Something I learned from James Clear's amazing book Atomic Habits was that to get rid of poor habits you need to add some friction. Eat too many crisps, um, don't have them in the house in the first place. Watch too much TV instead of exercise. Remove the batteries from the remote control and put them in the drawer in another room. On your phone before bed, have the chargers in another room. Just make it inconvenient to keep that habit going. And in the end, you'll stop doing it. And it's the reverse for building new habits. Remove the friction. Find exercise hard, then have all the clothes out the day before. Have the shoes by the front door. Just make it all easier to do especially in the early days. Good habits can be formed and poor habits can be stopped at whatever age you are. You just have to want to. Here's one. As an adult, you don't usually have that many people around you to motivate you like you would when you were a child. So you have to do it yourself. So I'm going on my run, going to explain. Okay, let's start with when you're a child. Like when we were all children, for the most part, we had our parents ferrying us around to races or matches or dance competition, whatever it is. And suddenly you don't have that as an adult. And that layer of motivation that is, is there, like, you know, the parents that wake you up in the morning, that's all gone. So I'm gonna spin you through my motivational toolbox. Things that have worked in the past for me and things that currently work for me. I'm just gonna throw them at you in case something sticks. And the current mindset I've got myself in, and actually this is gonna sound contradictory, is that running isn't about motivation at all. It's about discipline, as in, I know this is something that I've got to do for my life, so I do it. I don't rely on whether I wake up and feel tired, which I do. I don't rely on whether I wake up and feel a bit achy or I don't wanna do it, which I don't. 
I just know it has to be done and I know it's the right thing to do. So I've kind of shed motivation to a level and just now it's discipline. There's no thought process involved. I just get up and I get out. There's Mary. Mary out on her run as well. So the second thing is that I think about future Ben a lot. So whenever I'm in a race and I feel like I might not finish like a long race or whether I'm wanting to stay in bed instead of get up, I always just think, what is future Ben gonna say about this? And I can feel my disappointment immediately and I'm like, oh, I don't want any of that. And here are four quick fire motivational tools that have worked for me in the past. First one, get all your clothes out the night before, get your shoes next to the front door ready to go so that it's the least effort possible when you get up to get out. Second one is the five second rule. If you sit down and you wanna move and you wanna go running, countdown from five at zero, you have to move. That's a really good brain override trick. Next one is the 10 minute rule. Give yourself 10 minutes on the run and it's a free, it's a free pass to go home if after 10 minutes you still don't feel it. And I promise you that doesn't really happen, but you're tricking your brain into at least starting. And lastly, write an implementation intention, which is writing down the time, distance, place, everything you can about the run that you want to do. And apparently, according to science and research, you're 90% more likely to make that run happen if you've made it a reality on pen and paper. Ultimately, as an adult, there are very few external sources or people that you can look to to consistently motivate you. So you have to look inwards. It has to be about discipline and getting it done, but it's on you, it's on your shoulders. So if you rely on pure motivation to get things done when you don't want to do them, you're not doing them. If you rely on discipline, even when you're tired, you're doing it because it's the right thing to do and future Ben would be really angry with me. And we've talked about this quite a lot on the channel, so I'll try to be brief, but I feel like the majority of runners as adults when they get into running, get into it for goal-oriented purposes. And that's to say that it's very rare to find an adult that starts running again after and having not run because they just know it's the right thing to do. Which actually, ultimately, long-term is pretty much the only real reason that you should be running because it is the right thing to do and it's good for you. But we get ourselves into it for reasons like winning a medal or running a distance or losing some weight. And as a kid, a lot of those things, although some of them are kind of pushed onto them by parents, let's say, oh, you'll get a medal if you do this. Most of the time, it's just about the process. You just run because that's what you do. So you just learn to run and you don't really question why you do it in the nicest possible way. You don't think, oh, this is gonna lose me weight when you're a kid running, but here it is the easy solution and this is what's great about it the key to changing being a goal oriented runner to a process oriented runner is just knowing that is going oh light bulb goes on i should just be a runner because i know it's the right thing to do and it's just about being a better person and once you get there you'll be in it for life no problem adult or kid and that's the joy of it Okay, one of the biggest problems that I've found, okay, I'm not I'm gonna be able to hold myself here, hang on. One of the biggest problems I've found, and it really sucks when you're an adult, is that you are much more prone to injury than you were when you were a child. And the reason for that is actually quite simple. Basically, muscles, ligaments, tendons, they become weaker, they become less flexible, they become stiffer. But it doesn't have to be that way. The obvious solution is that you invest in yourself, and it could be strength work, but it could also be flexibility work, things like yoga, or actually just having a good stretch routine after a run. So really the only way to mitigate against the effects of father time and the risk of injury is to invest in yourself in a good strength and conditioning routine or whatever that looks like to you that supplements your running and is not just running. And there really is no need to overcomplicate it. The key to a long, good quality of life and the key to good quality in running 
is making sure that you strengthen your body and prepare it for doing just that. It really is, honestly, it's that simple. And here's one that is definitely relevant to adults and usually not children, or certainly was from my perspective, is life happens. We got busy lives. There are different things that pull you in different directions. Some people have children, some people don't. Some people have crazy busy jobs. Some people are more flexible with their employment. But whatever it is, there are things that pull you away from your running. And there are two easy fixes from that. One is more of a mindset fix and it's how you look at this. Ultimately, you should have the attitude that every single session, every single run session you have is crucial. And yet, no run session is crucial. No one run session is crucial, I should add. So if you miss one, in the big scheme of things, when you're trying to be a runner for life, is it gonna make a dent? Are you gonna look back when you're 89 and go, oh, what about that Wednesday when I was 43? And I'm, no, you're definitely not. But you gotta have the attitude that making all of the sessions, if you can, is important. So try not to miss two sessions in a row but also be kind to yourself. Life is going to happen, you're gonna get sick, your children might get sick, there might be an emergency at work. It's gonna happen. You mustn't beat yourself up about it because I think a lot of it, a lot of people leaving running and stopping running is about how they feel about themselves and their self-esteem because they didn't make that run and it knocks them and it's a failure. It's not. It's part of the tapestry of running, if you like. And you just have to get good at time management. If you've got a busy life, then you've got to make it happen. It comes back to the discipline thing. We wake up at 5 a.m. to get a run in. Or we'll run later on in the day after work, even if we're tired. Or we'll work our runs around our busy week. You just need to work out time management, write it down because implementation intention is gonna make it happen. I'd like to say it's as simple as that. Of course, we know it's not but that's a solution to the life happens kind of problem when you're an adult runner. Another big problem with starting when you're an adult, and I know me and Mikey have both done this, is this misconception that when you don't make the progress you want to see in the early days, just chuck more volume at it, just run more. That's the solution. But actually, it's almost the opposite. Running is one of those weird trust processes where things don't happen overnight and you have to, you just have to hope that it's going in the right way. So. When you don't see progress over two or three or four months, you, you could be forgiven for thinking, I'll tell you what, I'll just run more or I'll just do a lot more harder sessions. That's definitely the way to make the improvements. But if you go back to the point I made at the start about the different training thresholds, then you'll know that varying the sessions that you do might be the key. So you'll have to bear with me, but the reason I decided to do this one on the track was to say, if you train, all base, all aerobic base, all nice and easy, and you're not seeing the progress that you want to see. Maybe sprinkle in a track session where you're working on your lactate threshold like we spoke about earlier, or maybe even working on your VO2 max, although me and Mikey wouldn't recommend that at this point considering it's 42 degrees. So we're not really practicing what we preach right now. No, we're not. <laughs> no, we're not, we're struggling. So a quick example to finish, let's say you're doing 50 kilometers a week and you're seeing no progress. Why not try swimming. Four, swimming? Why not try 40 kilometers a week of easy running, but then a 10 kilometer harder run or 10 kilometers of intervals? See if that makes a difference. Switching things up in your training is the only way to keep your body guessing, and it's the only way to move all three thresholds forward. So let's say the point of this is to train smarter, not harder. And if you found value in the video, then consider subscribing. And if you liked the video, you're definitely gonna like this video, which is the big problem with endurance training. But as always, I'll give you the solutions as well. And you know what? Thanks for watching. See you Sunday.